Hey guys, Hunter here bringing you another Raid for Beginners episode. Today, we're gonna talk about some of the most common mistakes new players make and roll out a list of do's and don'ts. Remember, as always, these are just guidelines. I'm sure you guys will find exceptions, but in general, these are good things to keep in mind. Let's do it. Okay, don't number one, don't ever, ever, ever sacrifice your legendary champions. Just don't be that guy. Epics too, unless there's a really good reason for it, like wanting to level up skills on a champion you have duplicates of. Sure, some champions might seem underwhelming at first, and if we're being honest, some might actually need a little rebalancing. Don't worry, that's something that's always being worked on behind the scenes. But the reality is, you just won't be getting legendaries and epics every day. You might find yourself with a long time to wait to summon another if you need one later. That champion you sacrifice might get buffed, or they might be useful for the one particular challenge you find yourself struggling with at some point. So hold on to it. The same goes for almost any Void champion. Void shards are super rare to begin with, and there are fewer farmable Void champions. So even rare Void champions shouldn't be sacrificed unless you have enough multiples to burn. In general, unless you want to use them for skill upgrades, most champions of rare or higher rarity should be kept, at least until you've tested them out to see if you can find a place for them. And your starter champions and those you get for rewards, those are some of the stronger beginner champions, so don't feed them unless you have someone better to fill their role. On that note, don't number two. Don't invest heavily into your common and uncommon champions early in the game. They generally won't be able to perform as well as you need them to, and will quickly be overshadowed by stronger champions you summon over time. Early game, it's best to focus on champions that can make a difference right now and that you'll be able to use in the long term. Speaking of managing champions, do use the Vault. If you don't plan to level up and upgrade some of the stronger champions right now, it's better to move them to the Champion Vault. It has plenty of space and will keep them safe until you're ready to use them. Also, don't waste your skill tomes. Skill tomes are an extremely rare commodity to start with, and epic and legendary ones, just like legendary champions, are even rarer. Wasting skill tomes to skill up weaker champions is one of the biggest rookie mistakes. While you can give higher rarity tomes to lesser rarity champions, you almost never should. While you're still early in the game, keep those tomes safe until you're sure you have a champion worthy of them. Upgrading champion skills can be the difference maker in transforming a champion from just being a kind of useful to an all-out monster. When you have your first legendary champion and not enough legendary skill tomes to upgrade them, the regret will be real. Trust me. If you really want to upgrade a rare champion skill and you don't have any rare skill tomes, just wait until you summon a duplicate champion. So the general idea of don'ts, and we just covered, is this. Think before you commit your limited resources. The same applies to artifacts too. Common, low rank artifacts are a dime a dozen. You'll be getting a lot of them. Don't bother trying to max them out, and don't invest too much silver into upgrading them. Though less expensive to upgrade than higher rank artifacts, once you reach a certain level, they'll still drain your silver like crazy. Silver is incredibly important early on, so save it for good artifacts with the stats you actually need, not just the artifacts you have laying around. Next up, do think like a banker, and think long and hard before you spend your gems. Those are a valuable resource and should be used wisely. You'll see a bunch of cool stuff there, but don't make impulse purchases in the shop. Look at your current goals in the game and decide based on them. Are you so new you need a few more champions to make some decent progress? Get a summoning pack. Do you have several cool champions that need to be equipped and upgraded? Get energy refills. Once you have a good core of champions, energy refills are almost always the best way to spend your gems. Spending gems efficiently will really help you in the long run. Oh yeah, speaking of gems, do use the gem mine and upgrade it ASAP. It will give you 15 gems per day, and that's not something to sneeze at. The payoff isn't immediate, but think of it like investing in the stock market. Over time, you'll be earning a substantial passive income, and once your initial investment is paid off, it's free money, or free gems, or whatever. You get the idea. Here's another one. To level up and upgrade your champions quickly, do get food or XP brutes. Food is what you call low-ranked champions that aren't very useful for actual battles. 
You can either sacrifice them at level 1, without leveling them up at all, to give XP to another champion, or level or rank them up and use them to upgrade another champion's rank. That second option is going to give you much more bang for your buck. To level them up before sacrificing them, the best way is to farm a stage. The most common method of farming is to team food or fodder champions up with a very strong champion, then repeatedly beat a stage and level up through earning XP. The food champions die, and the farmer, the stronger champion, beats the stage single-handedly. The food still gets the XP. Now, not every strong champion is cut out to be a farmer and most require a certain set of skills or certain skill properties to be able to take down a stage on their own. We'll cover this in depth in a dedicated video. Here are the cliff notes on what things make a good farmer. AoE attacks, high damage, counterattacks, and something to help them sustain themselves, like self-heal, lifesteal, or healing from artifact sets. The whole point is for the champion to survive and successfully fight multiple enemies alone. Finding a good farmer will make your progress through the game much easier and faster, and is often the fastest route to developing a champion through food. This is a complex topic all of its own, so don't worry, we'll make a video covering how farming works soon. Do use auto battle, but not always. Since farming requires a lot of time, it's way easier to use auto battle to keep running a stage over and over. That'll allow you to do your own thing, put the phone aside, and just collect the reward after your champions did all the work. But remember, efficient resource usage is everything. If you're failing to beat a stage, that's wasted energy. That energy could have been better used to progress or win a powerful new artifact. You have to compensate for AI stupidity sometimes by using better artifacts than you would on manual mode. If your teams aren't strong enough, the AI won't be able to take on the tougher dungeon bosses or other complex battles. When that happens, be sure to take over. Sometimes a quick change in strategy will be the difference between victory and defeat. And last but not least, do keep your champion skills in mind when equipping them and building teams. Some champions complement each other really well, and that's what experienced players call synergy. Let's check out an example here. So Tyrell is an epic champion of the High Elves faction. His second skill, Singing Steel, is an AoE attack that decreases enemy defense and puts them under a sleep debuff if they've already had their attack decrease. That's insanely useful and can potentially make the entire enemy team skip a turn. Here's a second champion, Adriel. She's an epic from the Sacred Order, and what we're interested in is her third skill, Blinding Flash. As you can see, it attacks all enemies and has a 50% chance of decreasing their attack. And if that hits a critical, the chance is 100%. So obviously, we really want Adriel to crit as much as she can. For that, we can equip her with artifacts that boost her critical rate stat, pair her up with Teriel, and let the enemy have it. Now, see, Adriel goes first because we built her with a bit more speed than Teriel. She slams the enemy team with Blinding Flash, and thanks to a high critical rate and accuracy, she lands a lot of decreased attack debuffs. Now it's Teriel's turn to hit them, and with the perfect match of skills, we put that bunch of enemy champions under a sleep spell. To make that work, you need the right champions, the right artifacts, the right stats, and even the right turn order. Raid's a game of strategy, and there's a lot of depth and nuance to working out the smartest ways to overcome challenges. And that's just one example of synergy between two champions. There are plenty of champions in the game that have combinations like that or even cooler, particularly when you look at four or five champions all synergized together. Hope you found this monster of a video helpful. Hit like and subscribe. We've got a lot more coming.